as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Faber as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you, and I'm glad that you have tuned in to the Bringing to Light Ministry program. Always a joy to be with you. I love the Word of God, and I love the opportunity to come your way speaking from God's holy Word. How privileged we are. I remember when we were in Cuba, and those people were not allowed to have Bibles, but many of them that did, you know, they would try to hide them and, and share them with one another because they didn't. So we are so privileged and we need to enjoy the Word of God as we have it. Also, I just wanted to say thank you to you that write to us. What a joy to hear from you. I know we're all busy, but I want to encourage you, please, Send us a note and let us know that you have found our program. We're going to hear a special word now from Shantae, so li listen carefully as she shares with you. Hello, I'm Shantae Hawkman. In Exodus 12, we learn about the Passover and how God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. God spoke to Moses and Aaron that for every house to take a lamb, a spotless lamb without blemish, and to sacrifice it, and to take the blood upon the doorpost of each house. This blood would represent a token or a covering that the children will be protected from the plague of destruction. And God is this lamb. He represents this lamb from this passage. And we know that Jesus Christ has come as the sacrificial lamb for you and me, that he loved us so much that he gave his life for us and that he wants us to welcome him into our lives. And as we allow God to, to come into our lives, that that blood is a covering over our hearts and over our lives, and that it protects us from eternal destruction. That as we ask Jesus to be our Lord, that the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, is a covering over us, that we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus was without spot or blemish and that he came with, and he knew no sin, but he came to die for you and me to take our sins. And as we confess our sins, God is faithful and he is just to forgive us from all of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. If you have never asked Jesus to be your Lord, I would love to invite you to pray with me today. And if you are living in sin and not serving God right now, I would love for you to pray with me. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just ask you to come into my heart today to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Father, thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus, as a sacrificial lamb, the ultimate sacrifice, that I could be free from my sin. I ask you to come into my life today to be my Lord and to be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for praying this prayer with me. We would love to hear from you. We have a packet on salvation that we would love to send to you. So please call or write to us, and we want to hear from you and hear what God is doing for you. May God bless you, and we love you. Well, praise the Lord. Hope you have your Bibles today. On our last broadcast, we were speaking from Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 22. We're going to look back at that verse today. It's just one of my favorite verses. I had shared last week with you, I had heard a message from John Osteen, and he shared this particular verse and gave a, a precious story that just really ministered to my heart. We're not going to repeat that story today, but we are going to look at this verse again. It says, Fear ye not me. Now this is God speaking to us. Saith the Lord, Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass 
over it. And this is talking about the seashore. The same line, if you will, where the waters come up is generally where it is every year. Now, we know we have high tide and low tide, and I understand that, and we talked this past time about even sometimes there are these huge tidal waves that can come over that, but we know eventually it's going to go right back into the sea. But the boundaries that you see where that ocean front is, is there because of God's perpetual decree. When he began to create this world and every detail that there is, God spoke it and whatever he decreed or declared is ongoing. So the Bible says that everything is upheld by the word of God. Even the cells in your body, every molecule of your being is cohesive because of the spoken word of God. It is not because it has the ability to do that. It is because of the decree of Almighty God, the very decree that holds our feet on this earth, what's called gravity. God spoke it all. You know, you can take a little bulb and you can plant that bulb and that thing may be ugly, but you put it in the ground and in the springtime, it will begin to come up with that greenery and before you know, you might have this beautiful hyacinth that has come out in a fragrance that there is nothing like it. How can that be that something can come out of this ugly round ball called uh, uh, the, the very, in the soil and then have this wonderful fragrance? A bulb that can be so ugly, but something so beautiful and the color so vivid because of God's perpetual decree. Now, with that mind, again, I want you to begin to think. When it comes to what God has spoken in His holy word concerning you and me, that word is truth. Scripture is very clear. It's knowing the truth that makes you free. What tries to hold us in bondage? What is it that comes to steal, kill, and destroy? What is it that tries to bring depression and oppression? What is it that holds us in the bondages of many things? It is darkness. It comes from the evil one, Satan, and those demonic forces. But I want you to know that we have a perpetual decree from God's holy word, and he is waiting for us to stand on what this book says and war against what the enemy is trying to do against us. Jesus defeated him and gave you and me the authority over the works of darkness. It really grieves my heart when I'm counseling with people and they'll begin to tell me their troubles and their problems, which I want them to. I want to look at what's going on. You know, have we opened the door for the wicked one to come in? Are we ignorant to our authority over what the enemy is doing? Do we not know that? Uh, so many people, I'm amazed. I'll be, begin to work with them and I'll say, well, you know, this is happening. You're having the manifestation of darkness over here. What are you doing about it? And they'll just look at me while well, I'm praying. Uh, I just keep praying, Sister Charlotte. I just keep praying. Well, yes, let's pray. Thank God for prayer. But if it's darkness that's coming against you, the Bible said you resist the devil. If you are submitted to God, you resist the, the, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But many people are not doing that and it amazes me that they do not know their authority. If you would like to have more information on that, I would be glad to send you an altar packet on the authority of the believer. It's just a short teaching that I do. But you need to get that in your heart and you need to be a doer of that. Amen. Okay, so with that in mind, we look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and 7 through 9. It said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Let's just pause and look at that. What is my worry? What is my anxiety? What is the care that is weighing upon me? Now, let me say this. We've all had times we've had cares and worries, every one of us. But you see, some people, they keep the care and they keep their worry. I've heard people almost brag, say, well, you know, my mama was a worrier and my grandmama was a, a, a worrier. And, uh, you know, I guess I'm just a worrier too. We just worry. And I'm thinking, how sad is that when that is not what God intended? Things come and initially we may feel worried, but what are we going to do about it? 
Let's put our trust in God in knowing whatever comes our way that God is greater. You know, sometimes I'm, it, it, the temptation comes to me and I'll begin to look at the news and I'll begin to look at what some of the leaders in my nation is saying and doing and I begin to hear the political platforms and I am in awe of what I'm seeing and I'm talking about a bad kind of awe. I am grieved when I begin to see what is going on in my nation which you know I don't consider myself an old woman yet but you know even in my lifetime things that are being said and done would have never been said and done when I was a young girl. I remember being in the classroom and we had our prayer time, our Pledge of the Allegiance, and we had a Bible scripture. I remember those days in the public school that we had these opportunities. And we take those kinds of things away. What do we expect if we're not standing upon the Word of God? And I believe that's what they're seeing. And you know, a lot of people, they're getting discouraged and they're giving up. Listen, church, if we ever did rise up and believe God, we need to be doing it now. You know, even though I know what the Scripture says, that the darkness is going to become dark and there's going to be troubles on every side, God never said based on that Scripture that you're excused from praying and interceding and believing me. You're excused that you don't have to speak the Word of God. That is not true. We have a response responsibility more than ever to join together with the brothers and sisters in Christ. I know my time of doing this taping. We have our Tuesday morning prayer and we meet at 6 30 and it's amazing the precious people that are coming out and they're faithful. We've been doing this for years and believe in God. Yes for our families concerning things for us but praying for Israel. Do you know that there is a scripture that says to pray for the peace of Israel and that you would be prosperous and blessed? We are called to pray for the peace of Israel. We need to be praying for our nation. Why? The Bible says so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life if we pray for those in leadership. So I want to encourage you, hold fast to God. Don't be that worrier. Don't let the enemy come. When we're talking about the cares of this world, listen to me. The Bible says there's five things that comes to steal the Word of God in the, in the book of Mark. And we see that those things are afflictions, that's that that burdens your spirit, is persecution where we feel mocked. And notice the third one is the cares of this world. The cares of this world, and I'm going to go ahead, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. Those are the five things that the enemy uses to try to rob the Word of God out of our hearts. And let me tell you, he's been doing a good job, even though he's defeated. And why is he doing a good job? Because the people of God, either they're ignorant to what they have been given through Christ Jesus, their authority, or they're being lazy. They're paying more attention to the roar of the lion rather than the lion of Judah, Jesus Christ the Word. We have the promises of God that is greater than anything that the enemy can do. I'm hoping you're listening to me today. This is the truth, the Word of God. So the cares of this world, what is that? The cares are worry, anxiety, and fear. These are the huge things that I hear in my counseling appointments. And sometimes we'll look at what is the root of this care? Why is this fear so intense? Why are they tormented by darkness? What is going on in that arena? So I want you to know, to me, I feel that that's the enemy's big one against the body of Christ, and it's the cares of the world. So with that, what did Paul say? He says, it's the care of the church that comes upon me daily. He loved the church. He had a commission from God. But you know, Paul had to deal that he did not take the worry and the anxiety upon himself of the church. He himself had to learn to take the care of the church and place it upon the Lord. You see, even with my ministry, I can look at the finances. And well, I've been in ministry a long, long time. I'm 30 plus years I've been in the ministry. And I know through all of the years, I've had to hold fast to God for our finances. You know, it's not usually we've had this big surplus in our bank. And I said, now I don't have to be so diligent to pray and believe. We've always had to hold fast to God. Because in our ministry, we do not operate out of the ties of a local church, which many ministries do, and I'm glad for them. 
But we've had to believe God that there would be people just like you that would, yes, first tithe to your local church, but that you would believe in this ministry and you would sow a gift to bring into life. I have some people that's faithful every month and they give. Every once in a while, someone may give. So I'm trusting God, and sometimes it's come real close. I'm thinking, God, you have this bill today. Here's this television bill that came today, God. But you see, God is my source. But God moves upon people's hearts that they're willing to give. I just sent out a newsletter, and one thing that I wrote in that newsletter is something that I remember so vividly about Kenneth Hagin Sr., uh, I am forever grateful to that man, and I learned so much from him coming out of a denominational church, and I'm so grateful for what I learned. But I want you to know he would say, you know, please continue giving to uh, our ministry. And of course, it's called Rhema. But he said, this month we have a special need. And he said, we're building a new classroom. And I'm making this up, but there was a time I remember the classroom. And he said, if everybody would give $5, now, I'm sure they had some money toward it, but he said if everybody would give $5 extra, he said our need would be met. And I just thought $5, how that that can make a difference if everybody would be obedient. And you know, yes, I gave an extra $5 because I wanted that classroom to be built for students who were ready and preparing themselves to go into the world to preach the gospel. So, you know, sometimes we think, well, if I give, I've got to give this huge amount. I have a little lady in another state that sends us $10 every, every two weeks, every two weeks. What a blessing that she is. And her little kind notes and encouragement and praying for us, it means so much. So, yes, give to your church your tithe. That belongs to your local church. But if God moves upon your heart, and I'm believing that he is to help us, with this ministry as well. So cares try to come. Cares try to come upon me concerning not only our ministry, but sometimes things that happen in my family, things that I have to deal with, and it tries to weigh on my heart. But I have to take that care and cast it over upon the Lord, being reminded that He cares for me. And faithful is my God who's called me, who will also do it. I stand upon the Word of God. I hold fast to the perpetual decree of my God, knowing that His Word is truth, and the enemy has been defeated, and I can resist him in Jesus' name. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now that's interesting. The enemy is roaring like a lion. And notice this next part. He's an adversary. He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now notice that. It didn't say he does devour, but he may. Listen, if Jesus defeated the devil, he is defeated. What gives the enemy any power to devour? Now think about a lion. I don't know if you've ever seen them throw meat to a lion, but he tears into that and he can have it ripped up and eaten in just moments. You see, the enemy has been defeated, but if we do not know that he is defeated and take authority over him, he can come into our lives. He can still kill and destroy. Now listen to me. When we think about that, the enemy roars that that is contrary to the Word of God. Notice, seeking whom He may devour. He's going to speak lies into your life. He's going to try to get you to worry. He's going to try to get you double-minded. If you begin to listen to that and you listen to it over and over, there is a belief system that can come to you. And with that belief system, if you believe the lies of the enemy, you literally empower him to come into your life. You are asked and commanded by God to put your trust in Him. Believe the Word of God. Scripture says you must believe that God is and a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You must seek God, seek His promises. But if the enemy comes and says, you know, they're going to die, 
or you're going to lose everything. And you start giving word to that, you know, I, I guess I'm going to die. I guess I'm going to lose everything. I guess this is going to fall apart. And you begin to doubt, then you are becoming double-minded. And when you begin to believe again what the enemy is saying, you and you alone open the door for the enemy to come in. Have I done it? Yes. And I have repented of that. I know now I must speak life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What are you speaking? Just my luck, I'll lose my job. Or we'll probably end up, my car will probably break down someday. Listen to you. You are speaking, really, not what you want, but what you don't want. You are speaking the negative. You are speaking death. You are empowering darkness to come against you. I've had to repent for many negative words that I have said, but when I learned this truth, I made a decision. Only life is going to come out of my mouth. I'm going to resist that devil. I'm going to tell him he's a liar. I'm going to cast down what he's saying, and I'm going to hold fast to the Word of God. What are you believing today? Are you believing what the enemy is roaring? Are you believing your circumstances and your situations in life? Are you believing it's never going to be any different? I remember growing up, I was so bound in my thinking. Uh, my daddy was a, a pastor of a church, and I mean, he made so very little money. In fact, he had to work another job just to pay for our electricity and to put clothes on our back. And I remember how difficult and hard it was. And I thought that that was humility. I thought, you know, the more uh, poor you were, the more humble you were. And God was pleased with that. So I had that mentality. So I had to have my mind renewed that the Bible says that God will meet our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I had to have my mind renewed to the truth that if you give, it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will men give into your bosom. I had to have my mind renewed that if I would give of my tithes that God would rebuke the devourer and he would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that there's not room enough for me to receive. Well, I don't know about you, but my checkbook has some room for more to come. How about you? So let's believe God based upon the perpetual decree, the word of God. His word is truth. Our God is the same yesterday Today, today and forever and I am holding fast to him for this ministry for my family for my health for everything he's called me to do and believing God for more open doors of opportunity to lift him up and to bring him glory and to bring him honor I remember if you'd have told me that I would take a missions trip out of the country I'd say there's no way I don't have the monies but you know when God calls me he equips me. I've enjoyed so much ministering to you. It's always a, a joy for me. And I just want to encourage you once again. Maybe you've never written to bring into light ministries. I know some people don't want to write because they're afraid that we're going to keep receiving ma mail and keep receiving mail. If you don't want that, just let me know. But sometimes I see some of you maybe at the mall or I see you at church. And it's just such a joy when I hear you say, I watch your program. It's a blessing to me. It encourages me because I am here, not for myself, but I'm here for you. So it would be a great joy to hear from you. Also, when you're writing, send in your prayer request. I take every one of those very seriously as I lift them up to the Lord. Well, I've again enjoyed ministering, but our time is gone. Until next time, may God bless you, and I love you. I love you all. Hello, I am Shantae Hawkman. Do you know how much Jesus loves you? We hear the song of Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And little ones to him belong, and they are weak, but he is strong. But the truth of that is so simple, that God loves you so much. Sometimes we try to search for that love, that true love in our life, or things to fill that void or emptiness in our hearts. Sometimes people in the world will go towards drugs or alcohol or even just trying to succeed at one thing and then the other. And just the busyness of our lives, sometimes we forget about the love that God has for us and that how much He wants us just to stop in the day and spend that special time with Him in prayer and in worship. 
For we know the Bible in John 3, 16 says, For God so loves the world that he gave his only son Jesus, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. In verse 17, it says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come to condemn us or to make us feel less than. And sometimes we feel like we're not even worthy enough to come before him. But God wants us to come to him, to come boldly. It says in Hebrews in chapter 4 and verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time or need. This verse says that Jesus, he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, our weaknesses, the things that we face every day, that God, he knows our heart and he knows where you are today. And I just wanna come and just encourage you that whatever you are facing, if there is an addiction in your life, God can set you free from it. There is nothing impossible through Jesus Christ. And he wants you to come into him and to call upon him. Romans 8, 13 says, call upon the Lord and you will be saved. God wants you just to come to him and come boldly to the, his throne and find that grace and that help in the time of your need. Whatever it is, I want to pray a prayer with you today and that God can deliver you and just minister his healing touch to you. Father, I come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I just lift up every person today, Lord, that is listening. And Father, I thank you for ministering to their need today. That God, you see them there and you know their need. And God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. And as we call upon your name, Jesus, that you are there, that you never leave us and you never forsake us, and that you were always there to, to comfort us and to strengthen us. And Father, I ask you to meet that need today in every life. And God, I thank you for it. And I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. I know the Lord has touched you today, but please write to us or call us and let us know what God is doing for you. We have several packets on, on healing and, and uh, believing God and, and for salvation and deliverance. And there's many things that my mom has taught. And if there's a teaching that you need, please feel free to call and request that CD. But we just will continue to pray that God will minister to you and your needs today. And we love you and we, and we just bless you today.